Today we talk foam rolling. Specifically, what does it actually do to the body? We're going to explore the science behind it as well as how athletes and coaches are finding their own best practices. And yep, that's me, Coach Nate. Now let's roll. Get it? If you're new here, remember, you are a runner too, and we want you to subscribe to our channel so you can be a better, happier one. Hit that like button too while you're at it. That helps other runners just like you find this video. Now, technically known as self-myofascial release, runners add foam rolling as well as other types of rolling in before their runs as part of a warm-up to improve performance, and other times after the run to improve recovery. Of course, physical therapists have prescribed it since the late 1980s as they're known to help with injuries too. We popularly call it foam rolling, but self-myofascial release can take many forms. It could be a typical roller, it could be something taped together and homemade, reminders to roll more on it don't hurt either, it could be a soft tacky ball built specific for the purpose, or it could be something newfangled and modern. More on this percussion gun later. And the other cool thing is you can pretty much roll out every body part in your body. Your feet, your calves, your shins, those beefy quads, those equally beefy hamstrings, the rear wheel drive, yep, your glutes is what I'm talking about. Yep, don't forget your other side either there. Your low back, your upper back, your shoulders, your lats and triceps, even your forehead. Well, maybe not your forehead, but you get the point. For me and the thousands of athletes we work with daily in the Run Experience app, Foam rolling and mobility plays a huge role in becoming better, faster, happier, healthier runners. In fact, you can find two of my personal mobility routines that include a mix of foam rolling with other types of work directly in the app. Each session takes about 30 minutes, but they are really thorough and dare I say, pretty awesome. Download the app now and you can start those sessions today, not to mention getting immediate access to all of our audio workouts, training challenges, and race specific programs. But does myofascial release actually work? And if so, how? I did some digging into the science to find out. Now, viewer be warned, and this may seem a little crazy, but there's actually not a lot of scientific consensus on this. But there are a few strong theories to each have a little bit of truth. Let's dive into theory number one. The first theory is mechanical. No, we're not talking about the gears on your bike. We're talking about the joints, tendons, and muscles of the body. When we train hard, we create micro tears in the muscle fibers, and they end up stiff as a result, which then increases tendon and joint stiffness too. Self-myofascial release reduces tissue adhesion, improving the sliding surfaces between your skin, fascial and other tissue layers and restoring greater joint range of motion. So yes, it's true, you really are like an onion. Theory number two is neurological, meaning for those of you dealing with pain or chronic pain, the pain signal coming from the brain is actually not the same thing as the tissue damage itself. And often we get stuck in this literally painful feedback loop even after the tissue has repaired. Like my fake lump here, the idea here is that self-myofascial release introduces a new and different stimulus to the painful area, thus disrupting that signal and making you feel pain-free. The next theory is physiological, and stay with me, there are a few things here. Specifically, SMR is thought to increase blood flow to damaged muscles and tendons that don't get as much blood for faster regeneration and recovery. It's kind of like a healthy inflammatory response that triggers that recovery to happen more quickly than it naturally would. And one more for you, it changes your hormones with an increased parasympathetic circulation, which kind of gets us to the opposite place from the constant stress and fight and flight we put ourselves in. That's right, it kind of helps you calm down, mellow out and relax, as you can see me doing a little gut smashing right here. It even helps you fall asleep more quickly. The next theory is a fun one. It is psychophysiological, meaning that we believe in self-myofascial relief to such a degree, or we think it works to such a degree that it actually starts to work. Yes, we are talking about placebos here, which may or may not be where new toys like the percussion guns fall in. They certainly feel good. 
and they certainly do something. But do they work as well as other forms of SMR? And do they even work at all? But if we feel good and no harm's being done, then who cares? I mean, just kidding, but, but am I? Because when we get a flood of endorphins, does that ever hurt us or anyone? But all theories aside, when I think about foam rolling and self-myofascial release, I really like to bring it back to what we really care about, which is how you move in your body and how you run. Now, let's use your feet as an example. Our feet are meant to be kept straight when we walk and run so that the arch of the foot operates correctly so that it can absorb shock, it can support the rest of our system without any further collapse, and in other movements like the squat here. But herein lies a problem with many a runner is that we lack the important range of motion to have good mechanics. If you lack the proper range of motion in your ankles, for example, your feet will collapse or you'll adopt a duck-footed running stance, which is neither efficient nor effective for faster running. You know, it's kind of like driving your car with your wheels out of alignment. You might be able to do it for a while, but you're going to chew through that rubber pretty darn quick. But here's the cool part, just by working on your calves and shins, you can improve your ankle range of motion and slowly but surely make change here. Maybe your squat starts pretty stiff and not very deep, just like this one here. But again, just by practicing something more like squatting, your body will adapt and respond. And this is something where foam rolling plays a role. By working on the calf and shin muscles that attach to the ankle joint, you can free up range of motion in the ankle, making a deeper, better squat possible. And mobile ankles make for happier runners. That is what I'm talking about. So what do you think about foam rolling and how do you use yours? What's your favorite theory? Let us know in the comments. So there it is, guys. I'll keep filming. You keep earning your miles. I'll see you in the next video.